Is it possible to forecast your future fertility obstacles? Today we're joined by doctors from Dallas-Fort Worth Fertility Associates, and the reality is if two unknowing carriers conceive a child, their baby has a one in four chance of having the active form of the disease. And for a lot of parents, it's important for them to know what those odds are. We are joined now by reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist, Dr. Samuel Chantillis. You know, when we talk about genetic diseases, if somebody says, I don't have a history of it, or I'm not aware of a family history of it, why would I need to get tested? Well, there's a, something known as gene frequency. So uh, most of us, uh, 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 who have a who, who would be carriers of a certain gene, uh, of a certain disease state, wouldn't wouldn't know it. So we're asymptomatic. And it's something so, that may not have popped up at all. We may just not be aware of it at all in our so, family history. So without any family history. So, uh, for example, like cystic fibrosis, the gene frequency is uh, for for uh, abnormalities is one in uh, 25. Uh, of having a mutation is a one in 25 uh, chance if you're, a, uh, for example, a, a Caucasian, uh, non-Hispanic uh, Caucasian. So. Um, and if you were to know that, uh, you'd certainly want to test your your uh, your spouse, your your partner. Uh, if they were also a, a carrier of that, uh, if a mutation of that disease, then then as you mentioned in your introduction, you'd have a uh, one in four chance of having a, a child with a fairly uh, severe uh, disease. As we see science advance, and as we see more and more testing options available, the question can be out there: What's what's right for me? Is there a specific set of people that you recommend testing for? Well, certainly, uh, and uh, of course, there's various societies that have uh, various uh, recommendations, and we, of course, try to follow all of those recommendations. But, um, but generally, uh, for currently right now, cystic fibrosis is recommended for uh, for screening for everybody. Uh, initially, it was thought to be uh, predominantly a Caucasian uh, d d disease, but of course, with uh, intermixing of races, it's been very difficult to determine ethnicity uh, over over time, and so currently. Uh, all, all governing bodies would recommend that we, that we at least offer uh, this uh, the test for uh, for those individuals. Uh, other other uh, tests are usually recommended based on uh, ethnicity and, and risk uh, assessment. Um, and um, for example, you know if you're uh, Mediterranean uh, descent, uh, you, you're you know, tested for or Asian to you know, test for thalassemias and um, <clears throat> and um, there's. Uh, the American uh, College of Medical Geneticists has recommended universal screening for, for pa patients trying to get pregnant for, um, uh, for spinal muscular atrophy, as an example. So, so those are the ones that are more commonly uh, screened for. How involved is the testing process to determine your risks? Well, it's, it's really easy. It's just a simple blood test, although uh, for some people that's not so simple. But, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, go uh, give a tube of blood and, and, uh, and you're done. See, so. that's good. You hear genetic testing and you start to think that this is going to be just a series of tests that's going to be endless, but it's simple. Yeah. Uh, if, if the tests come out and they're not, uh, they're not positive, uh, are there options beyond that for people who are trying to conceive a healthy baby? Well, that's uh, that's one of the uh, the great advances in technology over the past uh, uh, couple of decades is we have the ability to do something about it today. Uh, so if uh, if you're tested positive for a, a certain mutation of a disease and your and your partner tests positive, um, you know we have the ability to do something known as pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, where we can uh, create embryos in an in vitro fertilization laboratory known as IVF. And uh, when the embryos reach a certain stage of development, uh, we'll remove uh, some of the cells in what's called the trophoblast, and um, those cells are sent to a, a laboratory to diagnose, uh, to determine if that particular embryo uh, has the disease or is a carrier or is uh, not a carrier. Uh, so it's a very powerful technology and allows couples who are at risk of having uh, a child with uh, a severe um, uh, disease and, and a chance to to uh, reproduce without that, with, with certainly minimizing that risk. And as you acknowledge, that can be a difficult decision sometimes for a couple to make, a couple to make if they want to go that route. But it's it's very similar to some of these other tests and routines that we've talked about. It's it's kind of up to the individual patient and couple and doctor how far they want to go. For so, sure. Okay. For sure. Very. Thank you very much. Amazing what we can do with science these days, isn't it? We've got a little bit more with the doctor just after a quick break. And next, is it possible to put your fertility on hold? And can freezing your eggs, can that really help? That's coming up.